All right guys, just waiting for it to get dark. Might be waiting quite a while, but it's been nearly a year now. I'd like to welcome you back to what's in the twilight sky. <laughs> Alright guys, I just want to clear some things up because these videos are going a little bit international now so you need to know that the information I talk about in these videos is for people in the Northern Hemisphere. It doesn't matter where you are in the Northern Hemisphere, as Earth rotates, we all take it in turns to see the same part of the night sky at the same time. There will be some significant differences depending on your latitude this month and I'll talk about that briefly but in quick summary this month we are entering the peak of Milky Way season, Noctilus and Cloud season is just starting and Jupiter will be putting on its best display of the year as it goes into opposition. But before I go into detail about all of that I'd just like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring another video. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 25,000 courses and the first 500 people to use the link in the video description below will get two free months. You can try any of those 25,000 courses as many as you like and if you're not happy after two months you can just cancel your subscription. No charge, no strings attached. Now, June and July in the Northern Hemisphere have the shortest nights and depending on where you are, you won't even have a night. If you're in the Scandinavian countries like Iceland and Sweden, Norway, you are used to this by now. You don't need me to tell you you're already experiencing midnight sun. You guys are very familiar with this, I'm sure. If you are close to the equator, the length of day and night doesn't really change that much. If you are sort of low northern latitude, so mainland USA, south of France and Spain and sort of southern Europe and Africa, you guys will still experience a, a bit of night time this month. But if you're like me or in the UK or in those mid northern latitudes or so central Europe, Canada, maybe the northern border of the USA, you will get stuck in a perpetual twilight for the next two months. To understand this, you need to know that twilight, so I'm sure you're familiar with dusk and dawn, but twilight is actually split into three very defined stages, and this is accepted sort of worldwide. After sunset, we have civil twilight, that is when the brightest stars and planets start making themselves visible. Then we go into nautical twilight when a lot more stars start coming out. And then we have astronomical twilight when faint objects like the Milky Way and the zodiacal light start appearing and you can see and photograph them. The three stages of twilight are defined by how far below the horizon the sun is. So when the sun hits the horizon, we have the time of sunset or sunrise. When the sun is between naught and six degrees below the horizon, we have civil twilight. When the sun is between 6 and 12 degrees below the horizon, we have nautical twilight. And when the sun is between 12 and minus 18 degrees below the horizon, we have astronomical twilight. Once the sun has gone below 18 degrees, the sky above you is completely enveloped within Earth's shadow. And that is official nighttime. That is as dark as the skies can get. A good resource for checking the twilight times for your local area is a website called timeanddate.com. I'll stick a little link in the video description as well so you can follow that. But that will tell you when the various stages of twilight start and finish. Now for those of you who are at the mid northern latitudes like me in the UK, so 50 degrees to 70 degrees north, there's a really interesting opportunity for the next two months and that is noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent clouds are the highest known clouds to exist. They form in the mesosphere at an altitude of about 85 kilometers. And normally you, you cannot see them with the naked eye. However, when there's a backdrop of a dark twilight sky and the sunlight catches the underneath of the noctilucent clouds, we can see them from these latitudes and these clouds actually reside over the polar regions over you know the North Pole but because they are so high we can see them from so far away so if you're between 50 and 70 degrees and you have clear skies just face north face the direction of where the sun should be and hopefully you'll be able to see some noctilucent clouds it's they can be very difficult to predict and even if they've shown up on one night, doesn't mean they'll show up on the next night. Sometimes you can see them for an hour, sometimes they're there all night. It's really potluck. So as long as you've got clear skies, just get out and face north and see if you can see them. You won't mistake them, they really do glow. Some really gorgeous tendrils 
uh, and patterns that you see in the sky. And the other good thing with noctilucent clouds is they don't really get affected by moonlight. So even if there's a big moon out, you can still see and capture the noctilucent clouds. Just make sure the moon is not casting your shadow onto the foreground of your shot. When it comes to photographing them, I advise using a bit of a longer focal length, typically a 50 mil, 75, 85, 100, 135, uh, because they will be really low on the horizon. So it's nice to kind of zoom in and capture the detail of the noctilucent clouds. But then the closer to sunrise you get, or if you're close to sunset, there may be a chance that they do get quite high up in the sky and almost over your head. And then you can use a wide angle and get a nice big sky full of these really awesome glowing patterns. Now this month on the 21st of course we have the summer solstice, the longest day of the year or the longest daylight of the year. After that the nights start getting longer again. Thank you. But something that will come as good news for all of you is that we are entering the peak of Milky Way season. So if I load up Stellarium you can see that after sunset the Milky Way starts to rise in the southeast and makes its way up into the south and if I just zoom out a little bit you can see that it's a really good time to do a Milky Way panorama and get an arching across the eastern skies and then as the night goes on the Milky Way will move higher and up into the south and when it hits directly south that's as high as it will get in the sky and then it's out pretty much all night and then as the sun starts to rise, the Milky Way will fade into the southwest. So new moon is on the 3rd of June, so if you're going after the Milky Way, it's going to be the first week or so uh, of the month, and then a few days at the end of the month as well where you can capture it. Just be sure to check the moonrise and moonset times in your area and also check the twilight times and capture it when the sky is at its darkest. You can still capture the Milky Way during astronomical twilight. For those of you like me in the UK, don't worry. You might not get as much detail and color out of the Milky Way, but it's still very photogenic right now. And as I said, this is the peak of Milky Way season now. You have to make the most of what's available. As for the planets this month, so just after sunset, you'll see Mercury and Mars in the sort of west-northwest. And Mars is shining at about plus 1.8, so very modest brightness. And keep an eye out for the 18th, where Mars and Mercury will be very, very close to one another. And Mercury will actually be shining at a magnitude of 0.2, so it will be three times brighter than Mars. So keep an eye out for that. That's a really, really interesting conjunction on the 18th. But the planetary highlight this month will be Jupiter. Jupiter will reach opposition this month, which means it's directly opposite the Sun for somebody on Earth. That means it will be shining its brightest for the year. And because it's opposite the Sun, it means that it's out all night. So as the Sun sets, Jupiter's rising and Jupiter will stay in the night sky all night. It's shining at a really bright minus 2.6. You can see it rising in the southeast after sunset. And it's in the constellation of Ophiuchus, so it's just right of the, the dark horse nebula that you see there. And, you know, just to the right of the Milky Way core. So it's adding a nice little subject to your Milky Way photos as well. Also, on the 16th, Jupiter will be right next to a very nearly full moon. So there's a wicked opportunity there to capture the moon as well as Jupiter and potentially some of Jupiter's moons in the same frame as well. Here's a shot I did last year where there was a gibbous moon along with Jupiter and three of Jupiter's moons. So keep an eye out for that on the 16th. That's a really interesting opportunity. And then there's also Saturn, which rises at about 11 p.m. And that's in Sagittarius, just to the left of the Milky Way core. So Jupiter and Saturn are still straddling the Milky Way core for now. And as we keep going on until the early hours of the morning, we should see Venus rising in the northeast. Uh, Venus is shining at a blazing minus 3.9, so you should be able to catch it just before the sun rises. And there's very little else going on in the night sky this month, guys. Keep an eye out for the summer triangle. The summer triangle will be directly overhead now, and it's made of the stars Vega from the constellation Lyra, 
Deneb from the constellation Cygnus and Altair from the constellation Aquila. So you'll see this triangle over your head and that's when you know it's really, really summertime. Also guys, with the sun not dipping too far below the horizon, there should be a lot of good opportunities for the International Space Station. So download the app ISS Detector if you haven't already, set up the notifications uh, and see if you can get a nice shot of the ISS this month as well. Right guys, before I jump into the hashtag Wittens, I just want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring another video and allowing me to create free and useful content for you guys. Skillshare is an online learning platform with over 25,000 courses in a wide variety of subjects for creative people. There's all things photography, even astrophotography and astronomy, and a lot of courses on business as well. And as I've already mentioned guys, the first 500 people to use the link in the video description below will get two months free of Skillshare Premium, so you will get access to all of those 25,000 courses. You can do as many as you like. And if you're not happy after those two months, you can just cancel your subscription. No strings attached, no fees. You can try as much as you want. But again, spaces are limited. So follow that link in the video description below and take advantage of two free months of Skillshare Premium. All right, so last month I asked you guys to photograph the Cygnus region just to try and take attention away from the core because everybody shoots the galactic core. And I was actually pleasantly surprised because I'm pretty sure when I asked you last year to do the Cygnus region, I don't think we had any entries. Um, but this time around, I was actually struggling to pick my favorites. And they were even, you know, I was struggling to pick my favorite picture of the, the North American nebula as well. So in no particular order, I love this image from Devon Flair. He was camping under the stars and you can see the Cygnus region high overhead. And I love that the, the Andromeda galaxy there just popping up over the horizon to join the camp as well. I've then got this gorgeously detailed image of the North American nebula, which lies within the Cygnus region. That was taken by Irish skies and I just love the, the pink, the vibrant pink that he's got out of it, it's just oozing and it's, I don't know, sumptuous. Can I use the word sumptuous for an image? It, I don't know, I just want to eat it. <laughs> and lastly is this image from Jacob Sana. I'm assuming that's his name. Uh, an image of the Cygnus region high up in the sky above his head. And that's the good thing about the Cygnus region that I was talking about, guys. It gets nice and high in the sky. So even if there's a little bit of light pollution on the horizon, it typically gets up and clears that light pollution and atmospheric conditions. Uh, and you can normally photograph the Cygnus region in, in great, great detail. But Huge thanks to everyone for using the hashtag Wittens. We're nearly on 5,000 posts now, which is absolutely crazy. But do go in there and check it out. There are some awesome, awesome, inspiring images in there uh, of more than just the Cygnus region, of course. This month, it seems as the hashtag has already been absolutely bombarded by Milky Way core images. Let's do the Milky Way core. So. Try and get creative, try and do it a little bit different because the Milky Way core is of course quite overdone now. Everybody loves the Milky Way core. So I'll be looking for stuff that's perhaps a little bit different, a little bit creative, a little bit interesting. Yeah, surprise me. Oh, and I may also feature any of the, uh, the interesting events this month. So like the Moon and Jupiter or Mars and Mercury together. Any of those conjunctions, I'll be uh, keeping an eye out for those as well. And that's it guys, make sure to smash subscribe if you haven't already. I hope you found this video useful. Please share it with your friends and astro communities and wherever else you may hang out on the internet. And if you're going out to enjoy the night or twilight sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.